Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess oh, to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sin, in my thoughts and in my words, in my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary of the Virgin. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest.
let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memory of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul 
to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you will not have life in you. 
Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. So whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Kindly remain standing. My dear brothers and sisters, this evening, we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. To celebrate this feast meaningfully, we must ask ourselves, why does the Church celebrate this feast after the feast of the Holy Trinity? The body and blood of Christ it's a gift of God to us all. And for what purpose? For our journey in life. That is why the Eucharist is also called the Viaticum. My dear brothers and sisters, life is a long journey. It is fraught with trials, with challenges, with surprises. When we read today's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, we could appreciate how Moses and the Israelites, they had to go through that journey in, from Egypt to the Promised Land in the desert for 40 years. Certainly, the trials that they faced each day in the cold, in the heat, in the desert where food is scarce. Certainly, they went through tremendous trials in keeping themselves together as a community. When we think of our forefathers, Certainly, their life too was not easy. 50, 60 years ago, our forefathers, they were going through extreme poverty, epidemics, lack of employment, financial insecurity. At the same time, a lot of violence because of gangsterism, religious, and racial violence. This is not to say in our own times, things are much easier. I always believe that in every epoch of time, regardless which epoch we come from, there are challenges to be faced. I don't want to compare those people from other periods of time. Were their life more difficult than ours? It is hard to say. Because the circumstances change, situations change. In fact, I think less people during the days of our forefathers committed suicide than people today. Even though we think that life is much easier. But this is true. Even in our world today, we face tremendous challenges. 
our young people trying to cope with the challenges, the changing situations in our time, whether with regards to the institution, to marriage, to sex, social media, now we have the artificial intelligence, today we are afraid of scammers, hackers, we are in a new situation. We are worried about nuclear war. We are about worried about the new age, where artificial intelligence can even destroy humanity. So, my dear brothers and sisters, in the face of challenges, how do we react? How do we respond? Many of us, when we face trials in life, just like the Israelites, we are angry with God. We think that God is not with us. God does not care. And this is particularly true for those of you who suffer tragedies in life, loss of your loved ones due to sickness, accidents. And we think that God does not care. God does not love us. So why should we worship Him? I know many young people today, they refuse to come back to church because they think this God cannot help them. This God is not real. Because they are wounded. They cannot explain the sufferings in their life. But the truth is, God is always with us. In today's first reading, Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and to know your inmost heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. My dear brothers and sisters, in our sufferings, it is not because the Lord does not love us. It is because the Lord wants to purify us want to strengthen us in our love, in the exercise of freedom. And love demands the exercise of freedom. And in this process, we go through suffering. No one is exempted from suffering. Not even the Son of God was exempted from suffering. Not even our Blessed Virgin Mary. So long as we are human beings, we have to go through the trials of life to be purified in love, to be strengthened in love. I think what is important is that how do we go about doing this? Why do people become resentful of God in their sufferings? The answer is simple, because of forgetfulness. That's why Moses always reminded the people, remember, remember, when we fail to remember God's love and mercy in our life, forgetfulness leads to ingratitude, leads to rebellion. And this is so true. If you look at your life, if you are angry with God, it is only because you remember the sufferings today, but you have forgotten those times when the Lord has blessed you, when the Lord has shown His love and mercy for you. Forgetfulness is the cause of rebellion because of the lack of gratitude. And this is true even in our own family, in relationships. Children are not grateful to their parents. Sometimes friends are not grateful to us because of forgetfulness. They've forgotten how much sacrifices we have given, we have done for them. All these things have been forgotten. And so true, huh? especially in friendship. For all the years, all the times that you have supported this person, just because of one mistake, that relationship is broken. Just because of one mistake. All those things that you have done are completely forgotten. And that is how we relate to God. 
And it is for this reason that today when we celebrate the feast of the body and blood of Christ, we are told that this feast is given to us so that we can remember that God is with us in our journey, that God is love, that God does not allow us to travel alone. He is with the Israelites in the desert and He is still with us today. In the Old Testament, the Israelites, they have to celebrate the Passover to remember in case they forget the great things God has done for them when they, free, when they were freed from Egypt. And that is why they celebrate the Passover every year as a memorial to make present that salvific experience. But God, in His love and mercy, not only has given us Jesus Christ, but He has given us the Eucharist, not just as a memorial, that is to say, to remember what He has done for us, but to make Himself present in a very real way. Every time when we serve the Eucharist in the body and blood of Christ. And so, the Eucharist for us Christian is the way in which we will remember His presence in our life, especially in our sufferings. The Eucharist for us is the means by which God will journey with us in life. And that is why you notice that the Eucharist is a very beautiful way in which God makes Himself present. He makes Himself first and foremost present in the liturgy of the Word. In the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, Moses says, Understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. If you want to be inspired in life, if you want to be guided in life, if you want to enter and understand the wisdom of God for you and His plans for you, then you must search the Word of God. In the response to the psalm, the psalmist says, He makes His Word known to Jacob, to Israel, His laws and decrees. The Lord has given us the Word of God so that we can find direction in life, so that we can find inspiration. And it's for this reason that every Eucharistic celebration consists of two parts, the liturgy of the Word, the liturgy of the Eucharist. The liturgy of the Word is a very important component of this whole celebration because that is where we find direction and inspiration in life. If we pay attention to the Word of God. And better still, if only, my dear brothers and sisters, if, before, if only you have read the Word of God, spend some time reflecting and praying over it before you come for this Mass, you would have been adequately attentive to the Word and you would have found some inspiration to enlighten you in your life. How many Catholics, I wonder, read the Word of God before they come to Mass? And if they come early to Mass in this church, in the church, what do you do? Go through your SMS, uh, read your, all the things in the mobile phone, except the Word of God. In fact, if you come early to chop a place, uh, then you should spend the time, instead of just chopping a place, you spend the time praying, reflecting the Word of God. And you will find that when the priest starts to preach, the Word of God becomes even more relevant. But of course, not only we need to be instructed in the Word of God, we also need to feel, we need to touch. We are human beings. We need to feel the personal presence of God. And this is where the liturgy of the Eucharist was, again, in today's gospel, Jesus said, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. As I am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father. Whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is a very tangible means in which for us who are believers of the Eucharist, that Jesus is here 
someone that we can feel, someone we can touch. And that helps us to appreciate His love. Honestly, sometimes I just wonder. There are some Catholics, before the presence of our Lord, they could feel so strongly His love. And there are many Catholics, whether the blessed sacrament is exposed or not exposed, they couldn't be bothered because they have no faith. Faith is just in the head. It's not in the heart. There is no relationship. That's why the presence of the Eucharist, although we all believe it, we say we believed it, not everyone has the same intensity. Many of you receive Holy Communion. Many receive in a perfunctory manner. It's just a piece of wafer. You go back. But for those of us who have reverence for the Eucharist, we have confessed with faith, then the Eucharist that we receive will change us, will transform us. Otherwise, it becomes just a wafer. That's why you ask yourself, how many Eucharists you have received? Have your life been transformed? Do you feel closer to God? Do you feel His love? Do you feel the Holy Spirit comes into your heart when you receive the Eucharist? Or is it just another piece of bread? That's why the Eucharist is not only static, it is dynamic. It depends on your docility, it depends on your faith, it depends on how ready you are to receive Him. If your heart is ready, if you are sincere, if the faith is there, every Eucharist you receive will change your life. And that is why some people say, I come for Mass every Sunday, nothing happens. Yes, because you have not allowed God to work in you. Because you don't have the faith. Your heart is not disposed. If your heart is disposed, I can guarantee you, God will touch you and move you. That's why preparation for, for, the, for the Mass is of extreme importance. And this is where today, again, we are told precisely the Eucharist is not just static but dynamic and it is seen, especially as St. Paul tells us in this second reading, there is only one loaf. It means that all of us, we have a share in this one body. The Lord comes to us not only when we receive the Eucharist, when we hear the Word of God, but present in this community. It is when we are in fellowship with the Christian community, when we are one together, journeying together, working together, praying together, celebrating together. That is where Christ enters our lives. So coming for the Eucharist is not just coming for Mass, it's also attending to the body of Christ, all of us, all of us. And so if you want to find strength, it is not enough just to hear the Word of God, receive the Eucharist, you need to receive the people of God. You don't travel this journey of faith alone. You need to travel with all of us together. Then your faith can be strong. Then you will get support. Then you will never feel that you are alone. So my dear brothers and sisters, let me conclude by asking you this question. What is more important? Is the journey more important or the destination? When you go for your holidays, do you think the journey is more important or arriving at your destination is more important? What do you think? The journey is important, the destination is important, but the most important is what? The company. It is whom you journey together. So the journey itself, you will discover lots of things, but it's the company. When you have someone that you love, someone that supports you, the journey is always beautiful. And when you arrive at the destination, you find ultimate joy. And this company is Jesus and we, the body of Christ. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God.
On the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, let us present our needs to our God of infinite love, who has given us the Eucharist. It is the bread and wine that offer us the gift of eternal life. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> For our Pope Francis and our Archbishop Cardinal William Go, that they who shepherd the faithful may continue to be signs of God's great love and compassion for all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, the people of God, which draws life from the Eucharist, that we may worship this mystery with ever deeper faith and appreciate more worthily the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharistic celebration. Let us pray to the Lord. For all priests, deacons, and extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, that they may continue to witness to the truth of the Eucharist that offers eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who go without the Eucharist due to oppression, remote locality, illness, or lack of vocations, that we may be united in love and prayer with them, especially with those who are prevented from practicing their faith openly and cannot receive their Lord in the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For nations of the world facing civil strife, that their leaders may uphold the importance of civil discourse and collaborate for the common good of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For our worshipping community, many members but one body, that we may be a people of deep gratitude and allow God to continue to build us into a community of faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all intentions. We pray to the Lord. May we who worship the mysteries of the Lord's most holy body and blood always experience His redemptive power and remember with gratitude all that He has done for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. On your church, O oh Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with His apostles, Establishing for ages to come the saving memory of the cross. He offered himself to you as an unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect sacrifice. Now reaching your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities that foreshadow. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we before the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. We make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and praying their homage and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with, tho with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our, Lord, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept these oblations of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our Father in faith, and the offering of your High Priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us 
your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Out of the sight of of God, pure him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Run, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that shared and divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Please be seated for some announcements. So, my dear friends, as we celebrate today the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, let us continue to deepen our love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. I'm sure you know, but just a reminder again, our Cathedral Adoration Chapel is open daily, 7 in the morning to 12 midnight. You may not be aware that we have members of the Eucharistic Adoration Ministry who are on duty through the opening hours to pray and intercede for all who come and spend time with the Lord. And so if you are keen to join this very meaningful ministry, do sign up online via our cathedral website. The Office for the New Evangelization invites everyone to join in this year's Catholic Conference entitled Everything, Everywhere, All in Christ. This conference will take place 14 and 15 of July. You can visit their website on the, on the bulletin or if you cannot get the website from this particular announcement, you can just write into our cathedral email. Right? There are more um, information on the topics, the speakers, and how to register. For the other announcements, please refer to the bulletin. You can take a copy, the hard copy, or you can download the soft copy from the website. After this, we will have the Corpus Christi procession. We invite everyone to join. Understandably, some of you may not be able to join, but those of you who are joining, um, two things to remember, you have candles with you. You light your candles now. The wardens will help you to light the candles. And secondly, there is also the QR code that you can scan so that you can sing along as you follow the procession, right? So we'll leave the QR code here for a while. Um, and after this, you get your candles lit. And we don't do this procession every week, so we are not very familiar with the flow, right, all of us. Um, so please follow the instructions of the wardens and the volunteers on the ground, yeah? Thank you for your cooperation.
Jesus Christ, we worship you living among us in the sacrament of your body and blood. May we offer to our Father in heaven a solemn pledge of undivided love. May we offer to our brothers and sisters a life poured out in loving service of that kingdom. May you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
bread from heaven. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have given us the true bread from heaven. In the strength of this food, may we live always by your life and rise in glory on the last day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Thank you, 
for joining us for this uh, Eucharistic procession. I was wondering how many would stay back for Jesus. And uh, quite a number of you have remained and we are grateful for your faith and most of all, your solidarity with us. We want to thank all of you who have, have helped in this celebration. Our grateful thanks for all of you here, especially uh, those who are serving in the Cathedral of Good Shepherd for trying to build up the body of Christ, which is truly the expression of our love for the Eucharist. That is the uh, full meaning of what we do when we worship the Eucharist. So we praise and we thank God. <laughs>